In this video we are going to talk about imaging methods. For example, you remember microscope images where the background was black and the sample bright or maybe the other way around. And I try to explain how that works. So the video could also be called illumination techniques or something like that. And first we want to distinguish between transmitted and reflected light. And I think the pictures here make it pretty clear what the difference is. So if you use transmitted light, you want to use a sample that is transparent enough for light to go through. And some parts of the sample might absorb more light than other parts. And that's why you get a contrast. But sometimes you don't have a transparent sample. For example, if you want to see the surface of a metal like aluminum, then you use reflected light to do that. Light beam hits the sample and gets reflected depending on the surface structure. If your sample allows to use transmitted light microscopy, you should do so because you simply see more details. If you decided on whether to use reflected light or transmitted light, you have even more options to control the final image. And these options are basically the same for transmitted and reflected light microscopy, only that you need a couple of mirrors for the reflected light microscope. Therefore, I show the principle only for the transmitted light microscopy because it is easier to draw the illustrations. The first and maybe most common setting you can choose is a bright field image. The sample is simply illuminated, absorbs light and appears dark while the background does not interact with the light and appears bright. Another method that increases contrast, especially for uncolored and unstained samples, is dark field microscopy. This time the central beam coming from the light source is blocked. That excludes light, which was not scattered by the sample, or in other words, light from the surrounding is excluded. That is why in this case the background appears dark, while the sample appears bright. Another common method um, is the face contrast. And it's basically the same setting as you already saw for the dark field microscopy. The difference here is only that you ensure to also include light that was not affected by the sample and you add a so-called phase shifter. Before we look into the detail and see how a phase contrast image is created, it's important for you to know that our eye and also photographic equipment is only sensitive to, to changes in amplitude and not to phase. That means our goal is to increase the difference in amplitude between different parts of the sample and also to the background. But now how is a face contrast image created and what does the face shifter do? Let's take a close look what happens to the light when it passes through the sample. First, we have light waves that are not really affected by the sample. That is light from the surrounding, for example. Then we have light that is influenced by the sample, for example, scattered and also ref uh, refracted. It's less absorption taking place here because the method is mainly used for transparent samples. Otherwise, we could simply take a bright field image. This light, which is influenced by the sample, experiences a phase shift. How much depends, for example, on the refractive index and other properties like the thickness. And if you remember some physics class, then you know that these two waves interfere with each other. And the phase shifter boosts that to increase the contrast even more.
in this picture you see the difference between the, uh, the different illumination methods. I want you to note the different background colors and also compare the pictures. Which method would you have chosen to analyze this sample? In this case I would say that the face contrast is the best choice because it reveals the most details. That was it. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.